I'm Dr. Gerald Chodak. So you've undergone brachytherapy to treat your localized prostate cancer, and now some time has gone by and your PSA is beginning to rise. What do you do about it? Well, first of all, be aware that there is a situation that can occur in which the PSA does spike up a little bit sometime, maybe one or two years afterward, and then it goes back down again. So before you rush to conclude that your treatment is failing, you want to have a few sequential PSA tests to make sure that it is continuing to go up and it is not just returning back down to its low level. Now, in the event that your PSA is continuing to rise, what do you do about it? And be aware that there's a controversy. There are no good clinical studies that prove that one therapy is better than another. You have several options. Some people would consider undergoing a radical prostatectomy. Now, that treatment can be done, but it is more difficult to do than in a man that never had radiation before. What happens is scarring occurs surrounding the prostate tissues, making it more difficult to remove the prostate gland. And consequently, the complications are significantly higher. There's a significantly higher chance that complications will occur in a man that has previously undergone, undergone seat implantation. But it can be done, and it should be done by someone who has specific expertise in that endeavor because they occur so uncommonly and because they're more technically challenging. Now, if you have a rise in your PSA, one question is, do you have cancer that's present in the prostate gland? And so people will recommend at some point doing a prostate biopsy if you're considering having local therapy, meaning surgery or something else. I mean, if, you don't, if you're not intending to have surgery, then there's not much point in doing a biopsy because it doesn't matter where the prostate cancers are located. Other treatments can treat them wherever they are. The most common treatment for a man with a rising PSA after seed implantation is hormone therapy. Now, hormone therapy is done because we want to keep that PSA as low as possible, as long as possible. Offering hormone therapy can kill prostate cancer cells wherever they're located in the body. And so it is a reasonable option, even though we have no studies telling us what is the optimal PSA to begin it? Does it make a difference? Will it prolong your survival? Many men feel better knowing their PSA is coming down and staying down. And so hormone therapy is reasonable, recognizing that there are potential side effects with long-term use. It can affect your sexual function, your sex, your sex drive. It can cause some weight gain. Long-term, it can cause some uh, metabolic changes. Some people are at risk for getting diabetes or other problems with their heart with long-term use. This is becoming more commonly knowledge, more common knowledge about the potential side effects of long-term hormone therapy. But it can do its goal of keeping the PSA from rising. Will it prevent or delay the spread of the cancer? That's a question we cannot answer at the present time. Given the controversy and given the potential for side effects, many people are now undertaking called something called intermittent hormone therapy, in which you go on hormone therapy initially for about eight or nine months, knock the PSA down as low as possible, kill as many cells as possible, and then you take a holiday from that treatment and you go off it for some period of time until the PSA starts to go back up. Uh, at the present time, there's still uncertainty whether it's as good, better, or worse than staying on continuous therapy. But one of its advantages are that it does reduce the potential side effects. When the serum testosterone returns back to normal, then a man may resume his sexual function, his sex drive will return, he'll lose some weight, he'll have more energy, and his bones will be protected. So there is this short-term benefit by going off for some period of time. Some people may be off for months and months before their PSA begins to rise up again. So 
It may be a compromise therapy between having nothing while the PSA is rising and staying on continuous hormone therapy with its long-term side effects. And many men are opting to do that even though we don't know for sure if it's the right option or if it will improve survival. But it is an option, and it's an option to discuss with your doctor, understanding the pros and cons. We don't know if, you, if you're if better off starting it when your PSA is 0.5 or 1 or 2 or 5 or 10. We don't know that. We also don't know how long you should be off it if you're going to do this intermittent approach. Generally, people are off it for about 3 to 6 months, sometimes longer. We don't know if there's an advantage to staying off longer or limiting the time that you are taking this treatment holiday. Still, it is an option, and my approach has been with my patients to make an ongoing decision with them based on the pattern of their PSA. If they went on treatment when their PSA was 4 or 5, and the hormone therapy knocks their PSA way down to, say, 0.4, when it gets starts coming up, well, many people don't resume it until it gets back to where it was when they started the therapy in the first place. But that's just a decision based on logic, not based on good science. It is something that doctors vary in their opinions about, and until we get some good scientific studies, we're just not going to know what to do. Bottom line is, for a rising PSA after brachytherapy, hormone therapy is a good option. Surgery is an option under certain circumstances, but it does have its complications and is probably not a good treatment option for men that are in their 70s or certainly older. It may be best for men that chose seed implantation in their 50s or early 60s and their cancer has recurred, it's present only in the prostate, and they want to do everything possible to maximize getting rid of it. Something to keep in mind as the options for a man with a rising PSA after seed implantation. Thank you.